Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I want to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment if you will. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive all of our updates. God bless you. Come on, let's get to the Word. Somebody said something to you and it triggered you. And you lashed back. And sometimes the devil used your tongue. Oops. <laughs> he used Peter's tongue. Did he not? That's why we need to guard our tongues, church. Because the devil will try to use that. And sometimes it's, it's, we're not even trying to offend somebody. We have to be careful because we are in a spiritual warfare. So the things that the devil stole, you have to stay in that posture of praise. You must stay in that posture of worship, giving God glory, quoting the word of God constantly. When the devil says, oh, you're not saved. Well, no, I'm saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God. Oh, you didn't do enough works today. No, my, 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 my salvation is not based on my works. Oh, did you see how you looked at that woman, pastor? Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. Does somebody hear what I'm saying? Because we have the grace of God. The Bible says we're justified. Oh. In the Bible, that word justify in the Greek, it means that the hammer has come down in a court hearing and the case is settled. The minute you say, Jesus, save me, bang, it's over, you're saved. There's nothing more that you can do to make your salvation any better. Nothing. There's nothing that you can make do to make your salvation any worse. It is what it is because it's not dependent on you. It's not dependent on me. It's dependent on the blood of Jesus Christ. And the last time I checked, the blood has still not lost its power after 2,000 years. Come on, somebody. Justified. Then we're sanctified. That means that we should not be the same today as we were yesterday. We should have a different attitude. We should have a different walk. In Corinthians, the Bible says that, that the Holy Spirit leads us from glory to glory. In the Greek, doxa to doxa, meaning one opinion to another opinion. Before I was saved, I thought it was okay to murder babies inside a mother's womb. But now... I went from one opinion to another opinion. I went from doxa to doxa. I went from glory to glory. Before I was saved, I didn't care men with men, women. I don't care. Yeah, if that's what you do. No, the Bible says God created Adam and Eve. We will never affirm homosexual marriage or a homosexual lifestyle or transgenderism that listen to me clearly i did not say we don't love them we do because we're mandated to we're mandated to love all people but we will never ever affirm the slaughter of millions of babies or somebody living in a lifestyle of sodomy never You know, today, today, there are hospitals, children's hospitals, one in Boston, one in Seattle, I think another one in San Francisco, I forget the cities, but they are giving mastectomies, double mastectomies, and hysterectomies to girls under the age of 16. They're doing it, they're doing it because they're confused about their gender. Because little Susie got up one day 
and wanted to play with army guys or play baseball or football or something. Oh, she must be a boy. That's where we are in a society. We are in the day. It's delusional, church. It's delusional. The Bible says in the last days, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he said that God will send a strong delusion. Why? Because they did not love the truth. First, or I'm sorry, Romans chapter 1 says because they did not worship the creator, they chose to worship the created things. They worship birds and reptiles and BMWs and Mercedes Benz. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. They worshiped a big house or a new job promotion. They worshiped a husband or a wife or they worshiped kids or grandkids because they did not worship the Creator. God gave them over to their lust. The Bible says that they began to have unnatural relations. A woman with a woman and a man with a man. So don't tell me, Mr. Uh, 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 Progressive Pastor, that it doesn't speak about homosexuality in the Bible. It's clear. It's unnatural. <laughs> to quote Robert Mugabe, who used to be the president of Zambia, or I'm sorry, Zimbabwe, he said, even animals know the difference. You never see a male monkey chasing around another male monkey? Come on. How crazy is that? But we, but we normalized it in our nation today. We've normalized this debauchery today. And we say, oh yeah, it's okay. But it's made its way into the church through a Trojan horse. Here's how it comes in. I don't even know how I get here, but I'm going to go ahead and preach a little bit here, all right? Listen, it's coming through a Trojan horse. What's a Trojan horse, Pastor? A Trojan horse with the Greeks and the Romans. The Romans had a fort, and the Greeks gave them a horse as a gift. And they said, oh, yeah, let us open your doors. Out jumps the army, and they got inside the camp. That's what's going on in the church today. How does it start? It starts by denying the inerrant word of of God when we begin to shift even a little bit the Word of God to make way for my sin all of a sudden Noah is allegory Daniel in the lion's den it's just a kid's Bible study Jesus right no he never rose that's a myth do you see how this stuff comes in? And it's made its way into the church where the church now approves it. Church, listen to me. We're living in the last days. We're living in the last hours. I believe that in the, in the scheme of time, and, and I've broken this down in studies of eschatology before, I believe we're in the last minutes, the last seconds before Jesus returns. That's where we are. But I want to encourage you to hold on to the truth. To every nation, to every generation, to all creation, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ.